Hi, welcome to the McGuffey Readers Online Tutor. Today's lesson is from the McGuffey's First Eclectic Reader, the revised edition, and we will be reading prose today. Prose from Lesson 62, Lesson 62, 12 Little Chickens, Part 2. This is Part 2. Let's see what happened to these 12 little chickens. Remember, they were walking along a bank, a bank of a brook, and the old mother hen wanted her twelve little chickens to cross the brook using a stepping stone, and they wouldn't obey her. Let's see what happened. Here we go. I never saw such children, said the old hen. You don't try at all. We can't jump so far, mother. Indeed, we can't. We can't, chirped the little chickens. Well, said the old hen, I must give up. So she jumped back to the bank and walked slowly home with her brood. I think mother asked too much of us, said one little chicken to the others. Well, I tried, said Chippy. We didn't, said the others. It was of no use to try. When they got home, the old hen began to look about for something to eat. She soon found, near the back door, a piece of bread. So she called the chickens, and they ran up to her each one trying to get a bite at the piece of bread. No, no, said the old hen. This bread is for Chippy. He is the only one of my children that really tried to jump to the stone. So let's read this lesson one more time, and I hope that you read along with me. I'll put up the text. Here we go. I never saw such children, said the old hen. You don't try at all. We can't jump so far, mother. Indeed, we can't. We can't, chirped the little chickens. Well, said the old hen, I must give it up. So she jumped back to the bank and walked slowly home with her brood. I think mother asked too much of us, said one little chicken to the others. Well, I tried, said Chippy. We didn't, said the others. It was of no use to try. When they got home, the old hen began to look about for something to eat. She soon found, near the back door, a piece of bread. So she called the chickens, and they all ran up to her, each one trying to get a bite at the piece of bread. No! No! said the old hen. This bread is for Chippy. He is the only one of my children that really tried to jump to the stone. Did you notice the new words in this story? We have the word chirped and the words never, indeed, slowly, really, brood, began, didn't. Use, door, bite, piece. Let's clap through the words that only have one syllable in this list. So we have chirped, chirped, brood, use, door, bite, piece. And we have several 
two-syllable words. I think that you noticed that because they have the accent marks. So let's look at the two-syllable words and clap through them. Like never, indeed, slowly, really, began, didn't. Notice that last word, didn't. Didn't is a contraction. Do you remember we've had contractions before? And contractions come from two words, did not. And we have taken out the O, put the words together to make one word, and where the O used to be, we add an apostrophe. Let's look at that again. Didn't is from did not. And we took out the O from not, put the letters together to make one word, and where we took out the O, we added an apostrophe. That's a contraction, didn't. Let's look at the long vocal sounds that we have today. Remember that a long vocal sound is a vowel sound that lasts a bit longer, like the long E sound in the second syllable of indeed. And then we have the long E sound in really and also in peace. We have the long I sound in the word bite, bite and the O, O in slowly. We also have that O sound in door. And then we have a long U sound, the U in use. And the long double O in brood, that O brood, it lasts longer than the short vocal sounds. And we have some short vocal sounds that make a short sound in began. In the second syllable of began, you'll find that short A. And the short E in never. And the short I in didn't, our contraction for today. We have no diphthongs today. No, no oys or owls. And then we have some substitutes, though. And remember that substitutes are letters that take the place of other letters' sounds. So we have an I as a long E in chirped. The er E, long E sound, in chirped. And we have the C as S in peace. And we have the Y as a short I in really. You can pronounce it really depending on where you come from. And then we have some aspirates today, like the CH and P and chirped. And they will let out a puff of breath when you pronounce them, like the S in slowly and the T in didn't. Do you feel the breath, the puff of breath, when you put your hand up to your mouth? What about use? Use and the T in bite, bite, and the P and the C in peace, peace. You should feel a puff of breath. And then we have some subvocals, and sub subvocals do not let out a puff of breath. They are mouthed but not spoken, like the R and D in chirped, chirped. Pronounce the D as D and not T. You have the N, the V, and, and the R as a subvocal in never, and the N and the D in indeed. There is the L and the W in slowly, and the R and the L in really. Those are subvocals. We have the B, the R, and the D in brood, brood, and the B, G, and N in began began. Don't pronounce the, P, the B as a P. Then we have the D and the N in didn't and the D and the R in door. We have one last subvocal and that is the B in bite. Bite. Let's read the story one more time and we don't want to forget our punctuation marks, our full stop or period, the comma, the semicolon, the exclamation mark,
the interrogation mark or you can call it the question mark and also the quotation marks we don't want to forget the quotation marks so let's read part one and part two together here we go there was once a big white hen that had twelve little chickens they were very small and the old hen took good care of them. She found food for them in the daytime, and at night kept them under her wings. One day this old hen took her chickens down to a small brook. She thought the air from the water would do them good. When they got to the brook, they walked on the bank a little while. It was very pretty on the other side of the brook, and the old hen thought she would take her children over there. There was a large stone in the brook. She thought it would be easy for them to jump to that stone and from it to the other side. So she jumped to the stone and told the children to come after her. For the first time she found that they would not obey her. She flapped her wings and cried, Come here, all of you! Jump upon this stone, as I did. We can then jump to the other side. Come now. Oh, mother, we can't, we can't, we can't, said all the little chickens. Yes, you can, if you try, said the old hen. Just flap your wings, as I did, and you can jump over. I am flapping my wings, said Chippy, who stood by himself. But I can't jump any better than I could before. I never saw such children, said the old hen. You don't try at all. We can't jump so far, mother. Indeed we can't, we can't, chirped the little chickens. Well, said the old hen, I must give it up. So she jumped back to the bank and walked slowly home with her brood. I think mother asked too much of us, said one little chicken to the others. Well, I tried, said Chippy. We didn't, said the others. It was of no use to try. When they got home, the old hen began to look about for something to eat. She soon found, near the back door, a piece of bread. So she called the chickens, and they all ran up to her, each one trying to get a bite at the piece of bread. No, no, said the old hen. This bread is for Chippy. He is the only one of my children that really tried to jump to the stone. Well, that's the end of our lesson, and I hope that you go to the mcguffyreaders.blogspot.com for more lessons and worksheets. And I hope you visit me again. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.